part of the opening is the subject line. Now subject lines we're very used to because we use them in emails, right? But in business letters they're extremely important. So if you're writing your business letter, it's going to be a PDF, you need to have a subject line. And of course your email should always have a subject line. So subject lines must stay short and usually they're going to help the receiver quickly see what is the topic, why is this important for me to read, what is this about, right? It also can help me see who should I give this to. Maybe I'm a manager, this is not my responsibility, but I can give it to someone quickly. So try to help people by giving them a really good subject line. Lastly is the complimentary closing. This is after the body. So now you write your letter and then after the body you have to sign your letter. So you give a complimentary closing. Sometimes you say something like sincerely or sometimes you can just say thank you or sometimes you can say sincerely yours or sometimes you can say respectfully yours. So here's a range of less formal to more formal. And I know often people skip these also in their email. It's not a good idea to skip it. You should definitely include it. So here's examples of including your complimentary closing. Then you sign your name here. And then what's this? This is your type name and your company work title. Very, very important to not skip these. Lots of people think that email is informal, so I don't need to include that. But you should definitely include that. And in fact, in your email program, there's a feature to include a closing at the bottom to say who you are and what your position is. I'm sure you've seen them. Sometimes companies also add more information to say something like this information is private, belongs to the company, you cannot uh, give it to other people, something like this. So that's inside the closing. So don't skip the closing and it's especially important to let me know who you are, your whole name and your position. Now later you may become more informal once we begin to communicate more and you may just sign your first name or you may just say thanks uh, but you should definitely include all the information the first time especially. I would do it all the time when you're doing business. I mean business is not a personal relationship, it's a business relationship. Here you can see from your book, you can look at the different parts of a letter and this is an example of a letter. And here we have this thing called mixed punctuation. Now mixed punctuation, the basic idea is the salutation which says, Dear Mr. Smith, will have a colon. Remember the, oops, remember the colon like this? There we go, colon, right? And then down here you'll say sincerely or thank you with a comma. Up here, let me clear this off. So I'm going to put a colon here and a comma here. So that's called mixed punctuation, and that's the way you do that. A block letter is a letter that has all of the lines on the left side, just like this. Very, very easy to read. I think that's the most common letter style we use. A mixed block letter may actually have some of the lines indented. But especially here, you see the date over in the center there. And then the complimentary closing down here is over beginning at the center. So it's a big indentation. That's called a modified block letter. And then here we have a semi-block letter, which means look at the date and look at the complimentary closing. Both of them are off from the center. And then each paragraph the first line, it begins indented. Now what is this all about, these different styles? There are different levels of formality. You can see that this style here, this semi-block letters, is very troublesome because you have to move to the middle, you have to move every line, the indentation. This is the most formal. Whereas the block letter, which is everything's just on the left side, date line, everything is just very simple on the left side, that kind of letter, is less formal. But you know, these days I think we, block letter is just fine. But if your company wants you to be very formal, this is the way you do it, a semi-block letter. Okay, the last part is mailing your letter. Now, usually you're gonna mail your letter by printing it out, if you're gonna mail it by hand, or you're gonna mail it through email. So let's just hurry up and take this example of I'm gonna mail it. There is actually a way to fold your letter and 
inside your book you can see the example. You need to fold the bottom up and then the top down and you leave a little gap and when I open the envelope I pull it out and I can just let the op letter open. This is a real thing. This is the way it really works. It's, it sounds crazy but it really works that way. You don't just stick the paper together and put it into an envelope and say woohoo whatever happened is a surprise. No. Because people at the other end are opening letters all day. So more formal is better. Now, of course these days it would be I think kind of rare that you do that. So you would probably be sending it in a PDF attached to an email. Okay let's look very quickly at this punctuation style just to reinforce this idea. And this is that your salutation is using a colon and then your complimentary closing is using a comma okay now if you do it the UK way then you would use a comma here and a comma at the bottom also or you can have open punctuation in which case you have nothing here and nothing at the closing so complimentary closing and salutation they have a specific way to use their punctuation. It's not just any way you want. Now, when you do finish up your letter and you're going to mail it, you can go ahead and print it as a PDF. And then that PDF you can go ahead and attach to an email. You can copy the body and put the body into your, into your email. This is the most normal way that the formal business letters work these days. It's also possible you could put it into an envelope as I mentioned earlier and then let's take a quick look at how that works as far as the address is concerned because this, this can be very confusing because of course in China and Taiwan we use a very different way. The Western way to do this is this bit here of the envelope this is who the letter is from and then this bit down here this is who it's so this part here goes a little bit down from the top from the center and a little bit beginning from the center over to the right whereas the return address who it's from stays up in the left corner just like that okay so again this is this is what this is who is the letter from this is called the sender, S, sender. And what is this here? This is who is the letter to the receiver, R, receiver. Okay, so that's a very quick summary. You can look inside of your QBL textbook to get all of the details. But I just want to emphasize it's important to be formal. It's important to not forget that. You're sending it by email, that's true. But people get hundreds of emails a day. A company gets thousands of emails and they look like junk. Think of all the junk email you get. It's so easy to look like junk, they just erase it. They don't know if it's, if it's a trick email or a con email or just some kind of crazy email. But when you look formal, you stand out and it really makes the person who receives it say, yes, this is a real email, this is the way business is done. And of course, the best thing would be you can make a PDF and attach it and it becomes even more formal. So good luck writing your formal business letters. And don't forget these parts. Heading, opening, closing, and buying.